time for us to talk about the most political subject in existence, okay? I saw this tweet, and I wanted to talk about it. There's this person called Anna. I don't know who they are, and I don't care, but they posted this tweet. The yassification of... Ask yourself why you want this, please. And it's screenshots from TikTok. And we have a lady with pigtails, right? These are pigtails? I've had a lot of people ask what, quote, free use means. It means that legally, I would always have to say yes to my future husband, even if I'm not in the mood in order to prevent divorce. We just talked about Dennis Prager. <laughs> hey, me, what if I just want to live as a free use object instead of be a housewife? Me, a few years ago, thinking I like it just a little bit more rough. Free use, right, okay. Oh, Chainsaw Man, dun, 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 yeah. Bottoms WTF, no, 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 hold back. And normally I would like kind of play this off with a bunch of jokes about women or bottoms, but I actually want to talk about this for a second. I actually think, I think this is conservative, as in this is, this sentiment. I've noticed this really weird trend of sexual puritanism from, I guess, young, like 20 something, or I guess like half a generation below mine or whatever, or at least when I see discourse. I, I, I've seen this a lot in the form of like people asking why sex scenes need to be in movies, which is not how art works. That's not how art works. You don't need to justify the existence of a portion of a piece of art on the basis that it should have to defend its, like that's that's not how that works. I think we're getting a kind of um, whiplash here, which in a way reminds me a bit of conservative stereotyping of liberal women during the suffragette movement and also during the sexual revolution, which is the idea of like women being very sexually educated, but their education being used to come to prudish conclusions. And to be clear, when I say prudish, I don't mean like if a chick doesn't want to have sex or whatever, that's fine. That's all right. Great. That's fine. Um, I mean like socially conservative conclusions about sex, like prudish in the way that a Christian housewife would be prudish, not interpersonally, but Puritan, you know, uh, weird about it, uh, stifled even. People get really weird about any kinks that are associated with uh, consensual non-consent, you know, and I guess this is like a free use thing or whatever. I've got like really bad news for you guys, like really, really, really bad news. You're going to hate this, folks, and I hate it too because I hate bottoms, but I'll let you know anyway. A lot of women, and I mean a lot, and I can tell you this for sure, a lot of women want to be smacked around while they're getting or fantasize about being abused or used or free use or this or that. Are guys like this too sometimes? Yeah, but let's, let's be real here. There are a lot of women like that. Now the question is, why? Okay, so I've talked about this before, and this is kind of like an easy answer. It's a lot more complicated than this. But a lot of people have argued, and I'm sympathetic to this argument, all right? A lot of people have argued that sexual kink, so, so by sexual kink here, I mean interests outside of something that people would consider to be like the basic sexual drive, right? So I don't think that kink is wanting to like missionary with the lights off, whatever, you know, or, or blowjobs or anything. I'm talking about like extra stimulatory stuff, stuff a little bit more out there, like say consensual non-consent. For those of you who don't know, consensual non-consent is role play rape, okay? Again, sorry, creepy as it may sound, it's pretty common. A lot of, a lot of ladies, you know, what are you going to do? Women, all right? Why do, why do people develop these tendencies, right? Well, I think, and again, this is like a, this is like an easy answer, but I think, I do think this, okay? I think that living is hard, and in the process of living, we pick up a lot of thoughts and trauma that we don't really know what to do with. So this is something, for example, I, I don't mean to come across as crass when I say this, for example, but one of the things that really fucks with the minds of victims, and again, think when I say, you know, like everyone thinks when they hear, they think like uh, 15 dudes in an alleyway or whatever, like just any, you know, anything in that ballpark, sexual, you know, abuse of some kind. One thing that really fucks the heads of victims is that they have a mixed relationship on it. Maybe the person who them was a partner they cared about, or maybe there was, uh, it was, it was fine the first half and not fine the second half, you know? Maybe there was something about the experience they enjoyed, even though the overall thing was negative. That's not that unreasonable when contextualized against other stuff. Like, haven't you all had negative experiences in which there's some, like, tiny little seed of positivity that you occasionally reflect on? That's one of the reasons why, uh, like, breakups can, or, or, like, losing a friend can be really tough. It's easy to lose a friend or a former partner, 
when everything is negative, right? Like if you have a partner and like things are going bad and then they're just a horrible piece of shit, then it's like, ah, f you. And you just leave and it's like, oh, okay, wow, that was so easy because things were bad. So I don't have anything to cling on to. But if it's if it's like, oh, well, actually, what if they were the one and we just couldn't work over that one problem? You know, oh, this was all negative and we were like really mutually abusive, but actually there was some like really good stuff in there. You know, this is one of the reasons why people have trouble leaving abusive relationships. People aren't good at dealing with good and bad mixed. Even if the overall thing is very, very bad, just a tiny bit of good can f*** with your brain. That's just how brains are. It's not good. Our brains are dumb and, and squishy and wet and bad at making decisions and very, very bad at, at sort of properly ordering emotions. So it should be no surprise to people that the exact same set of things can happen with sexual abuse. Um, you know, your squishy, wet brain can get confused feelings about even unambiguously negative things. Listen to like veterans talk about war experiences, you know? Uh, most soldiers have a shit time out there fighting. That is, it's, it's generally not a great time. You know, it's a known tendency that even veterans from wars that are not thought of fondly, like, say, the Vietnam War, it'll be like, oh, I suffered immensely for four years, but I made one close friendship over there, and you still, like, wistfully long for that experience of having, like, a war brother in the jungle or some shit, you know? And that's like, why would you... You can make a friend at a bowling alley here in the States. Why would you reminisce about that? You you literally had, like, malaria when you were thinking about, like, what are you doing? And, but but that's just how the brain is, you know? Trauma bonding, exactly. It's, 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 the, it's the contrast and context. You understand what I'm talking about. So why go over all of this? Well, I think that in a lot of cases... Wait, hold on. Let me just get mad at somebody from Sonja. Sonja, this isn't the first time I've yelled at you, is it? You're treading on thin ice. Vosh, can we please not Freud this? You're oversimplifying this. Not everything about kink is trauma, dude. It's a good thing I said that earlier, then. You're gonna have to pay attention. You're gonna have to use your noggin. Shake some of the loose water out of your skull, all right? And listen carefully, because I said that. There is no way in one stream segment I can off-the-cuff describe the totality of the psychological experience of kink. No human could. I'm trying my best. So anyway, obviously, you know, these complexities can apply to all kinds of mixed experiences, sexual abuse or otherwise. And I think that kinks are, for a lot of people, a way of controlling and contextualizing a selectively positive experience. So I have known people who have been raped and who were interested in role-playing during sex. And the reason they liked that was because they could explore the confusing positive bits of what they experienced in a context where they're ultimately in control. Uh, I, I don't even think that's that uncommon. I, I think that's actually like a, that's a fairly common, and, and, and a lot of, uh, victims get like, um, guilty over that too. Like afterward, they're like, oh, well, aren't I like enabling? And the truth is it's really tricky. It's really complicated. Are there ways to fuck it up and do it worse? Yeah, there are. Are there ways to like handle it appropriately? Yeah, sure. I'm sure this is the case for like a lot of kinks that involve the, uh, the selective loss of control or, or, or something that might be perceived as abuse in a different context. And you know, it, it's complicated. I'm not going to like, I make fun of bottoms and I always will. I'll never stop. You can't stop me. I will never stop. I make fun of bottoms, but I'm not like actually going to shit on people for what seems to be part of a reconciling with some complicated brain state. I get that. So why go over all this? I, I want to expand the purview a little bit. A lot of people who are into this stuff haven't even experienced, like for instance, uh, role play, consensual, non consent. A lot of people into that haven't like been, I'm not saying that every single person into it has been, but maybe they have thoughts about it. So say for example, what if you have a person, a woman even, who's sexually submissive, you know, in the sense they like being bossed around a little bit, many such cases. And, um, you know, they've never been, they've never been, uh, uh, taken advantage of or anything, but they have read stories of other women being, raped, you know, and they know, and they're, they're, they're smart. They're not stupid. They know that it's horrible. They would never play that down, but because they're kind of submissive leaning, they look at a story about rape and they're like, Oh, tee -hee, but wouldn't it be cute if somebody pinned me by my arms or whatever? And in their head, they're like, okay, well, obviously, you know, in real life, if this specific scenario happened to me, that would be monstrous, it'd be horrible. But, you know, like, maybe if there was a cute guy and they held my arm, you know. And then, you know, this this is how it all develops, right? And I want to be clear, by the way, we get really weird when women talk about this, but guys do this all the time. How many times online have you seen guys just casually say shit like, I want her to beat me up and sit on my face? Like, guys who are into, like, big anime mommies or whatever, and it's like, oh, I, I want her to beat the shit out of me. But people don't get as weird about, like, guys saying it, because I think that a guy joking about their own abuse, or even fetishizing their own abuse, 
doesn't evoke the same visceral discomfort in people that a woman doing it does. Because even though men and women both get a plenty, you know, obviously women more, but absolutely still happens to guys. We, there's a stronger visceral reaction to women talking about that because it feels like they're they're playing with fire a little bit. You know what I mean? Like if a guy says, um, oh, I want this hot anime cop mommy with the fat butt to sit on my face and beat me up. Is that really like get, like touching close to the sun? Is that something likely that for him to like manifest with bad behavior? Probably not, unless this is a fetishist so committed that he will go out there and commit a spree of crimes waiting for a female police officer to try an unconventional uh, chokehold on him. But with, with women, I think a lot of people are like, you know, like a woman will fantasize about a guy like punching her in the stomach and f***ing her mouth or whatever. And then people are like, whoa, well, hold on. That could, you know, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. That happens to people in real life and it's really bad. And it's like, yeah, it is really bad when that happens in real life to people in a non-kink environment. But to be fair, they're just doing the other side of the cop mommy sitting on the... Right? You guys get what I'm talking about, right? I'm just... I want to acknowledge, even though I'm mostly talking about women here, that people do have a weird, like, double standard when it comes to women versus men's behavior here specifically. And I think a lot of it is just because we don't think of men as innate victims or targets of sexual violence. So when they joke about it, it's like, ah, ha, ha, you know? God, think of how many guys have been like, I wish I was Shinji so I could be by Misato. Like, imagine a what if, okay, if a woman said, I fantasize about being this 14 year old being taken advantage of by a 30 year old, every, I feel like a lot of people be like, oh my God, what's wrong with women? What's wrong with women? What's wrong with women? But then guys say that shit about Shinji all the time. And I, I don't see people going like, what's wrong with men? What's, I don't, I don't see that. Please tell me I'm not the only one who's noticed this, because I feel like this is legitimately a pretty significant double standard, because guys get, just get to joke about this more freely. It's, 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 yeah. So why talk about this, okay? Well, I think that the attitude that a lot of young, feminist-leaning, kind of prudish people, and by prudish, I don't mean they're not into this. I mean they're not into other people being into this, you know? I think the problem is that a lot of them think that stuff like this is enabling, like, patriarchal culture or whatever but i've got a i've got a truth bomb for you guys i've got a secret okay so all of these women are fantasizing about something akin to being by a man though i want to be clear free use is not the same as consensual non-consent free use has like a ton of different content it's 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 total it's it's not i i don't like them being folded into each other even though they can be consensual non-consent is when you role play rape free use is when somebody puts themselves in a position where they can be freely sexually used, and that context can range from it being abusive, fake abusive, it's a kink, to, uh, like, they're the super cool, like, roommate at the house who's just, like, there to take your loads or whatever. Where, like, in some case, like, th there, there are, I've, I've known people who are into a free use dynamic on the other side of things, where it's not submissive, but actually neutral or even potentially dominant. Um, so I don't, I don't want to imply they're the same things. It's, 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 it's a different, it's complicated. Yeah, the people's wife, exactly. The pe what, tell me, is there a position imbued with more honor than that of the people's wife, okay? The, the, the people's wife with the long, uh, ankle length dress and no panties who goes about the, uh, apartment block and, uh, helping the, the good common worker, uh, as they, uh, toil through their, uh, you know, their, uh, their labors. Exactly. Yeah, everyone salute. Everyone salute the people's wife. Thank you. Red Soak Panda says, Vosh, even though I agree with your points, the first image comes off not as a kink thing, but rather a I must put out so my husband doesn't stop loving me. I disagree. This is 100% kink fantasizing. This girl was probably getting off on typing this, okay? I've had a lot of people ask what free use means. Free use is the kink term. There, there is no, like, conservative law called free use. Like, that... It's not like disenfranchisement or whatever, where it has this like, you know, like broader political. This is purely a kink thing. This is like, this is fantasizing, you know? And again, I don't know very much about TikTok. I don't know the dynamic here, but I've seen people like free use post on Twitter before, you transbians. And it seems to get a different response when it's in the context of women and women. So I, you know, like, again, I, the point I'm getting at here is that I think that this person right here is under the impression that this is like an enabling of conservative men's fantasies but i have a i have a secret for you guys are you ready to learn a secret okay conservative men hate women like this more than anything i know what you might think you might think whoa these are women who fetishize being sexually submissive to men why would conservatives hate them well that's the thing folks and it comes back to what we talked about earlier on stream consent 
conservative men like forcing women into subservience. They do not like women who are horny and slutty enough to have a pre-existing kink for being submissive to men. Women like that get made fun of and called whores by conservatives. Seriously, look at like conservative uh, uh, chat rooms or threads or anything, anything where they talk to each other about women. They don't fantasize about taking a horny, sexually engaged woman who's into being submissive and f her. They, ne they, they never do. They never do. They call her a whore. They call her a whore. They say that her sexual promiscuity is a product of feminism. They think it's disgusting and degenerate, and all they can think about is black dudes railing the woman before they get to. What they want is an image of some, like, Nordic trad wife uh, wandering about a field, someone they imagine is a virgin who they will shape into being a submissive toy for them because the purpose for them is control over the woman in real life, not kink control. I've had sex with submissive women, and even if they liked role-playing me having control over them, in reality, I didn't. I was just f***ing them. There was no broader dynamic there outside of the fact that uh, well, that was what they were into, you know? Conservatives don't like role-playing control over women. They want control over women. The, the kink element of it is off-putting to them, you know? Does that make sense? Just Jossie, I unironically do believe that bottoms have more complicated sexual psyches than tops. I do believe that to be the case. They probably also come harder, um, but on the plus side, we're stronger than them, uh, and they can't reach the top shelf in the kitchen. So I think that it does balance out pretty well. And switches? I don't... Sw sw switches, switches, switches. I've never met a switch. Every switch to me has just been a bottom, you know. So basically they just want be real conservatives okay yeah that is the point that i'm making okay conservatives do not want to role play controlling their partner and role play free use or domination over them in a consensual kink environment they just want to own and control a woman and then potentially rape her if she gets out of line that's what they think about because those elements of control in their minds at least satiate the insecurities they have over women Conservative insecurities over women and women's sexual agency do not allow for a woman to be like super uh, forthcoming and, 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 and daring about their kinks and interests. It just doesn't, you know? Women who are open about their kinks and sexual interests do not get that much positive accolades from, um, uh, from conservative spaces. They don't. Anyway, the follow-up response here is, and ask yourself why your partner is turned on by... So this is what I mean by reactionary thinking masquerading as feminist critique. The idea that enjoying consensual non -consen and to be clear, by the way, I don't like rape role play at all. I genuinely don't. Uh, there are a lot of kinks that I have that I pretend not to have for stream's sake because I don't want to argue with you guys. This one genuinely don't. Um, just not my thing at all. Uh, I find it quite off-putting personally, not like morally. Um, just, I don't know. It's just not my thing. However, the idea that being into consent whoa oh i misclicked no go back thank you the idea that being in a consensual non-consent it means you're literally into or whatever or like there's something morally wrong about having that kink this is reactionary thinking what this is is an essentialization of a person's sexual proclivities into a moral statement about their person and that's conservative thinking the idea that if a person has a given sexual inclination, there is no way for them to responsibly channel it with a consenting partner or for two people to have similar corresponding kinks and get along and for it to all work, uh, but rather it's just an innate moral stain against you, uh, that's reactionary thinking. As long as what you're doing is something that you can do responsibly with a consenting adult and you can get along and have fun, you know, whatever, um, then that's, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. I just don't like the idea that being a good... F I can't believe I didn't see this. No wonder, dude. She's, the, she's literally a part of the ideology that is the poster child of weaponizing feminism for reactionary talking points. Co-host at Marxism Today YouTube. This person's an ML. Possibly an MLM. It all makes sense. Marxist-Leninists have historically been extremely uh, conservative when it comes to uh, sexual morals. Uh, uh, you essentially arriving at the same arguments Christian fundamentalists do just through the other way around. Rather than the innate virtue of chastity, it becomes about like uh, the innate virtue of non-sexualizing women or whatever, or like the innate virtue of focusing on other shit. 
since when is ML a thing? I saw it first earlier today. It's not really a thing. You, there are there are fascists and there are non-fascists. Or yeah, the homosexuality is bourgeois um, type. Yeah, case examples we see in the street. Oh God, I'm not even getting into all the ways that like Stalin and Mao and shit were like insanely conservative sexually and with gender stuff. I'm not getting into. I'm not. That's a whole other thing. I'm just talking about the way that kink gets treated and the idea of sexual puritanism being a a, a, a a vessel for feminist critique of people's kinks, which is dumb. And also by the, like, okay, I, mm, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. In my experience, people who do shit like this are also into some pretty nasty shit themselves and they're like hardcore projecting, you know? It's, it's like how the most pedophilic conservatives will run around screaming that they're pedo hunters or whatever. I've met, I've not just met, I've slept with uh, two people who have both done the same bit where it's like, because I, you know, talk to them on Twitter, was, and, and it's like, you know, oh, yeah, well, I think that, like, you know, we should be focusing on stuff other than sex and that the people's revolution, blah, blah. But then they're, like, they're disgusting if you actually flirt with them, by the way. Uh, no hate to them if they see this. I mean, in a good way. Um, but it's like, it's it's like, it's like, it's like cracking the walnut shell or whatever. It's, it's like the, you know, cons consensual non-consent kinks are just the same as sexualized, and, they, and they're, just, they're just vile shit. It happens a lot, you know, and it happens with conservatives, not just with MLs or whatever, like all the time, you know? So the basic, the basic shit that I'm trying to get to here is that kink is complicated. I really don't like people doing essential moralization for people's kinks that are capable of being expressed in a healthy environment with other adults, blah, blah. And also don't woke yourself into being a reactionary, please. Bosh, I think the only problem is why do women like to be more submissive? Is this all patriarchal um, socialization? Okay, really quick. This is my theory. I'm not an expert, but this is what I believe, okay? You know how a lot of uh, guys who look gay are gay? And I don't just mean the way they dress. I mean the way they talk, the way they act, their frame. Like, there are so many twinky-looking gay guys. And it's like, is this a body type? That, like, are, are there literally... Is there literally, like, a genetic correlation between being gay and being twinky. I think people have an easier time being what they can see themselves being. I think that people form archetypes and expectations in their head, and if they adhere to those archetypes and expectations, it's easier for them to lean into something. So this is just a guess of mine. Now, first of all, I'm a, I'm a guy, probably noticed, um, and I have had sex with other men, though only as a top. There are plenty of guys who look like me who have sex as bottoms. However, you've probably noticed, if you're in the gay community, that if a person looks like me, they're more likely to be a top. And if a person looks like, I don't know, let's say a hairless five foot six twink, they're more likely to be a bottom. Now, I don't know of any, like, literal gene that makes a person a top or a bottom, but I have a guess. This is a guess that I have. I think that um, I and most other gay people exist on a spectrum on the likelihood of them being a top, a bottom, or a switch. And I think that people will grow more interested in aligning with whatever side of that spectrum they feel makes most sense for them. And a lot of what makes the most sense for them involves looking in the mirror and seeing what they see. Looking in the mirror, hearing my voice, seeing my face, looking at my frame. I have an easy time thinking of myself as a top. I just do. And because I have an easy time thinking of it, I imagine myself as one. And because I imagine myself as one, that's what I'm comfortable with and what I want to do. Likewise, a person who's much more feminine, who's naturally hairless, who's smaller, who's weaker, who has a bouncier ass, wider hips, I don't know, uh, might look at the mirror and form the opposite conclusion. I don't think that it's literally like genetically small hairless people are more likely to be bottoms in the gay community or big tall hairy guys like me are more likely to be tops. I think it's more like we try to find the archetypes that we represent and because those archetypes are comfortable, because that's what an archetype is, it's a simplified version, it's a trope, uh, we lean into it and it becomes comfortable to us, you know? People do this with masculinity all the time. Think of how many, like, types of guys there are. Oh, am I like a sports guy? Am I a mechanic guy? Am I like a computer programmer guy? What kind of guy am I? And then because I think of myself as that kind of guy, do I lean further into it? Are these now traits or archetypes that I feel comfortable with? A good example with this would be, I don't like wearing polo shirts. Why? Polo shirts are just as comfortable as any other kind of shirt, sometimes more so. Well, I associate polo shirts with like preppy golf dipshits. So I don't want to wear a polo shirt. So I'm locked out of the polo preppy dipshit archetype, aren't I? Baseball caps. 
Baseball caps are fine. I look okay in them, I think. But I don't really think of myself as the kind of guy who wears them. So I don't. And because I don't and don't think of myself as one, I grow less comfortable. Does that make sense to everyone? We are very beholden to the relationship between our self understandings and what we think society has in mind for people like us. And I think that a lot of this applies to women and sexual submissiveness. Uh, it is very easy, I imagine, for many women to imagine themselves in a sexually submissive role because that is a social value that is pushed and enforced heavily. It's also, you know, uh, in large part, I think, a product of the fact that women on average are just smaller and weaker. These are roles associated with physical submissiveness. So, because it's easier for them to imagine themselves in that role, because they more closely align with the traits associated with it, they look in the mirror and they think, you know, probably more likely that I'll be pushed around by a guy than be pushing him around, they tend to be more likely to be submissive. That's not innate or essentialized. That could be changed. As social values change, that could change. Nothing here is essential. But that's my, that's my guess as to why women tend to be submissive. Uh, it's just a, a, a probabilistic thing given the roles that people are expected to adhere to. Does that make sense? Okay. For most people, they learn about their sexual values when they watch porn. It is true, you know, if you could imagine a kind of like tabula rasa, you know, um, like uh, having sex in a vacuum situation or, or whatever, you know, the, what, what might a person think they enjoy? What might a person like? You're probably going to have your expectations shaped heavily by what you're told about sex beforehand. Isn't that social conditioning partly a result of patriarchal norms? Completely, yes, absolutely. But just because it's a result of those norms doesn't mean that it's invalid to be those things. I like being what I am, like a large, domineering, deep-voiced guy, and that's absolutely informed by the fact that I exist in a society in which stuff like that is kind of collected together into a masculine archetype, but that doesn't mean there's anything innately wrong with it. And if there's nothing innately wrong with this, then correlatively, there has to be nothing innately wrong with being like, a, I don't know, a, a chick who wants people to grab them by the pigtails and fuck them really hard. Okay, God bless you. Go forth, soldier. All right, I feel I've made my point. ML equals tanky? Yes, kind of. Shouldn't we strive to reimagine sex to not be this way? What? No. Do whatever you want. It's fine. Don't, don't do that. Don't, that, that's ML thinking. Don't do this, like, social project thing where it's like, every woman should strive to, like, not be submissive because in doing so, they're succumbing to the patriarchal. Don't, don't do that. As social standards change, people will change. If you want to change the standard, then you can change the standard. Don't do this, like, inherent more, like, you know, if you're a good woman, a good feminist woman, it's like that stupid guilt a lot of feminist women feel where they're like, oh, I'm a feminist, but I want a guy to f me in the ass thing in my face. It's like, okay, great, whatever. But then there's like this moralizing. I mean, well, if I was really a feminist, then shouldn't I be f him in the ass and coming in his face? No, I mean, sure, if you want to, but like, stop. This never works. All this does is make people feel ashamed of themselves. It never does anything. It doesn't fix anything. It doesn't, it doesn't improve the, the situation for any, anyone.